When Apple announced that you can now get an 8-core processor in the new 2019 MacBook Pro, the first thought that came into everyone's mind is that it's definitely going to thermal throttle if the 6-core MacBook Pro did. So we're going to find out if that's true by running our classic Cinebench stress test on both the new MacBook Pro with a 2.3GHz 8-core processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and Vega 20 graphics, as well as on our similarly configured and priced 2018 model with a 2.6 GHz 6-core i7 processor. The reason it's not the 6-core i9 processor is because we saw literally zero gains in video editing compared to the i7, and we expect to see the same results with the new 8-core, hence why we didn't pay an extra $200 for the faster 8-core processor. What we're going to do is run Cinebench R25 times back-to-back -to, -back to ensure that the system heats up and the fans stabilize the temps. Shortly after starting our first run, the CPU boosts up to 4.39 GHz, nowhere near the advertised 4.8 GHz turbo boost speed, which isn't a surprise because that number is rated off just one core out of eight, running by itself with temps under 50 degrees Celsius. The clock speed then lowers down to around 3.3 GHz, just before the temps reach 99 degrees. As soon as this happens, the wattage drops to 60, the temps instantly shoot down to 90 degrees, and the clock speed is now sticking to around 3.0 GHz. The temp slowly starts picking up again and stays at around 97 degrees, while the clock speed hovers around 2.9 GHz until we finish the first run with a score of 3096, before instantly rerunning the test again. Just for comparison, the $5,000 base iMac Pro scores around 3700 points in this test. Starting the second run, the CPU spikes to a lower 4.31 GHz before coming back down to the same 2.9 GHz clock speed range. Unlike the first run, the fans are now at full blast, so it's able to keep the clock speed higher at around 3.0 GHz at the same 97 degrees temp range, now finishing with an even higher 3161 score. Starting the third run, the CPU spikes up to only 3.65 GHz, showing the effect temps have on turbo boost speeds. Now here we notice something very interesting. The clock speed is able to stay at around 3 GHz while the temps are sitting at a lower 94 to 95 degrees. But out of nowhere, the CPU clocks down to 2.9 GHz even though it doesn't need to since the temps aren't too high. In fact, they go as low as 91 degrees with plenty of thermal headroom for faster clock speeds, but it doesn't ever go above 3.0 GHz, almost like it's being intentionally limited. The third run finishes with a 3,125 score. The fourth run spikes up to 3.7 GHz turbo boost, so it seems like the system's thermals have stabilized. We can now see that the temperature stays at 93 degrees while at 2.9 GHz, and 95 degrees while at 3.0 GHz, now completely stabilized. The fourth run scored 3,154 points, and the fifth scored 3,147, making for a five run average score of 3,136. Now before we draw some conclusions and thoughts from this, let's quickly talk about the results from the 2018 MacBook Pro. Basically every single run hit around 4.03 to 4.04 GHz peak turbo boost before coming down to around 3.1 to 3.3 GHz, before finally stabilizing at around 3.04 to 3.08 GHz at temps ranging from around 96 to 97 degrees. And interestingly, we didn't see temps randomly going down to 91 or 92 degrees like we did on the 2019 Pro. Each run was also very consistent and scored exactly 2,425 points every time. Comparing both of them, we see that the 2019 model hit a much higher 4.39 GHz turbo boost, but the stabilized clock speed was lower at around 2.9 to 3.0 GHz compared to 3.04 to 3.08 GHz. However, the stabilized temps were lower staying between 93 and 95 degrees compared to 96 and 97 degrees. This shows us that Apple decided to keep the temps a bit lower on the new model instead of slightly turning up the power to hit around 97 degrees. I read through some forums and some users mentioned that the high heat of previous MacBook Pros could have been wearing down the components in the butterfly keyboard. So if that's true, it would make sense why Apple would want the temps to stay lower, and it could actually fix the keyboard issues once and for all. The best part is that even though temps were lower than they could have been, we still got an average score that's 30% higher than the 2018 MacBook Pro. So we get more power with cooler temps at the same exact price. Snazzy Labs tested the new 8-core MacBook Pro and he found that Apple seems to have set a full load clock speed target 
which instead of turning up the clock speed whenever there's extra thermal headroom, the machine would slow down the fans for a quieter experience. He also replaced the thermal paste with liquid metal and didn't find much of a difference, stating that the 2019 MacBook Pro features much better thermal paste than previous MacBook Pros. This definitely shows in our testing, as the 2019 MacBook Pro idled at only 35 degrees Celsius compared to 45 degrees with the 2018 model. Now that's a huge difference. We also tested Cinebench R20 using a single thread to see the difference in performance and we saw that the 2019 Pro hit a maximum of 4.5 GHz turbo boost compared to 4.17 on the 2018 Pro. And we scored 466 points compared to 422. So not only do we get two extra cores, but each core is faster as well. So let's answer our original question. The 2019 8-core MacBook Pro obviously thermal throttles, right? No, it actually fixes the throttling issues from before, performing much better while at lower temps, which may possibly even fix the keyboard issues at the same time. If you're thankful that we ran these tests and you're thinking of buying a 2019 MacBook Pro for yourself, smash that like button and use the links in the description below to help support this channel. Make sure you're subbed by clicking that circle above and check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.